Hi everyone, it's Taylor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm an American expat living in Malaysia and I like to share my life and travels with you. I just want to let everybody know I'm feeling better. As you know, I'm usually talking about retiring to Malaysia, but I have these special friends from Cambodia who I'm interviewing today and they might give you an idea that Cambodia might be an option for retirement. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, it's Taylor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with my good friends, Claire and Jeremy, and they've agreed to be interviewed by me. Claire and Jeremy have a wonderful YouTube channel of their own called For Real, and it's about Cambodia. But let's talk to them and find out more about them. I know you guys are from Australia, but can you tell me a little about your background and where you're from in Australia? Um, we're both from the same little country town in Queensland uh, called Rockhampton. Uh, we didn't actually know each other for a long time until we met um, and then a couple of years later got married. Uh, we've travelled around the world quite a bit, um, especially to Malaysia and Southeast Asia. And we have uh, lived in uh, England and we've lived in um, Vietnam for a while. Oh, really? When did you get married? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He's passing that one along to me very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, our anniversary is in March, and this year was our 21st anniversary. Oh, wow. Yeah, Congratulations. So That's great. It's been quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any children or anything? No, we haven't got any children. That's how we can travel the world. Mm. Um, we've uh, worked most of our lives, so we have got properties in Australia, which helps us to travel and do this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, so we semi-retired, semi-retired. I understand that Claire actually has a real job still. <laughs> I do, yes. So I'm still working for um, a non-government organisation or more like what we call a charity mm -hmm. that's based in Australia. So I work for them three days a week, um, same hours as I would if I was living in Australia. So, cool. Yeah. So what made you guys decide to leave Australia? Well, back in 2014, we went to live in Vietnam for 12 months. And at the end of that time, like, we always knew that was only a 12 month kind of finite mm. period. And we kind of came home with the plan that we wanted to do something like that, but permanently within five years of that. Yeah. So we were on track and in 2019, we left Australia and promptly there was a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so we stayed in Cambodia for most of that time or for another what, two years two after years, that, two yeah. and a half years after that, um, throughout the worst of the pandemic and throughout all of that time that Australia had closed its borders and we couldn't mm. actually get back to Australia even if we had wanted. Mm. We tried a little bit, but not, not overly hard because no. yeah. life in Cambodia was just so wonderful. Really? Well, what made you originally pick Cambodia? Uh, well, we had like three or four options. We had Malaysia was one. Mm -hmm. um, we had Thailand, um, Taiwan, um, Vietnam, and Cambodia. So we went around every country and had a look, did some re uh, reconnaissance, when, did this and that. Uh, then we um, finally got to Cambodia, it was the last one on the list. Mm. Um, and we got off the plane in Siem Reap, uh, got on Tuk Tuk, started going towards the city and just went, yep, this is it. We hadn't even gone to the city. It was just that kind of, you just know it was a place to go. Mm. Mm. And ever since then, we've, we love it. It's beautiful. Mm. Well, I I'm, remember sitting in that tuk-tuk and I said to Jeremy, oh, is it too early to call it? <laughs> really? <laughs> and yeah. we were 10 really? minutes off the plane. Oh, that's great. We just kind of knew. And that was and, your first time there? No, no, no. it was oh. our second time. Yeah. And that was, that was like a fact-finding mission mm. in July 2019. So mm -hmm. about four months before we actually moved there cool. for good. Well, what we thought was for good yeah. before the pandemic. So, I know you've told me that you really like Penang, too. Is there some reason you picked Cambodia over Malaysia? Well, I guess it comes down to the visa situation for us, mm. really. Um, and the fact that we um, wanted the flexibility to be able to move around. And yeah. Cambodia's visa is so easy. Yeah. And in the end, we, although we like Penang and we really like Malaysia and Thailand and, and a lot of the other places in Southeast Asia, there's something about Cambodia that's a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a little bit more raw, a little bit more, um, a little bit less developed. Yeah. And it just, for those reasons, is just a little bit more exciting. Yes. And yeah. for us, that was a bit of a draw card. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I love Sam Reap, and I've been there a couple times, with like 10 years in between, and I've seen a huge change there. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think a lot of the development I've seen is actually good, yeah. um, because it was pretty much a small town when I went the first time. Yeah. The um, 38 Road project, which they've just finished, um, like, last year or two years ago. Mm. Like we were there for the start and the finish of it. It was major, they ripped up 38 roads, and mm. relayed them, uh, did all the pipe work wow. through COVID. Uh, it was horrible to live there in that time, horrible. Dusty, yeah. I bet. Oh. <laughs> like you go down one road, they rip it up, <clears throat> go down another road, they rip it up. Next time you come back, they'll be ripped up. But now they've got sidewalks. Um, it's a totally different city. It's mm. really good. Now I know you've been to Malaysia several times and a lot of my viewers are from Malaysia. So why don't you tell them what your impressions are of Malaysia? Oh, we absolutely love Malaysia. It's, it's such a beautiful country and the people, you cannot find more helpful people. Yeah, that's you true. Know, you're yeah. just out on the street, even looking slightly puzzled. And someone will come up to you and just ask you if you need help with something. And with a puzzle what? Uh, people, as you're walking past, they'll say hello to you. It's, yeah. it's just a very, very welcoming, it is. nice feel for I the love place. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we went up one of the mountains here um, and I got halfway up, up and I said, I can't go any further. I sat down and Claire kept going. And um, some people came down, they go, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? And these people are like 60, 65. Yeah. And I got their walking sticks. I'm like, yeah, I'm just waiting for my wife. And um, they went, oh, she just went up there. She's really fit, is she? I went, oh, she, yeah, she's pretty fit. And she, and she goes, just, just keep going. It's only 10 more minutes. It's, it's all flat. Uh, I think there's a little bit of lying in the flat in this situation. <laughs> but it was 10 minutes. So I kept on going and made it to the top. But they actually willed me to do it. And I got up and went up the hill. It's really good. Yeah, um, it's nice. I've, yeah. I've, I've noticed that people really are caring here too. Mm. Are there any challenges to living in Siem Reap? Oh, there's a lot of challenges, um, especially with uh, things you can get there. Like you can't get mm. everything uh, you can in like Malaysia. Malaysia, you can get anything you want. Right. Uh, there's no like Lazada or Shopee kind of there. Oh, really? No. Um, and there's no Ikea. Um, mm. Does Amazon deliver there? It does, but it costs a fortune. Mm. It's yeah. the, um, and uh, as well as that, the postal service isn't the best. Apart from that, everything is really good. Like you, the links are great. We've got an international airport there. Yeah. What's the infrastructure like? If you're traveling between Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, it's, it's mostly private transport, like minibuses, private cars, things like that. So there isn't kind of a rail link, a rail network or anything like that. It's, it's very much in the infancy. Yeah. But there is talk of a monorail or some sort of light rail system for Phnom Penh. But as there's nothing there at the moment, yeah. it's going to take a long time. A long time yeah. yeah, there is a bus network in Phnom Penh, like a um, you know urban mm -hmm. bus bus network, but I think it's um, it's said to be quite unreliable. I've never yeah. caught it myself. Uh, but in transport wise, there's the, the tuk tuks and um, pass apps. Like mm -hmm. it's like pass app is like the grab um, mm -hmm. here is pass app there. So you just get that. It's only one or two dollars anywhere in whole of Siem Reap. It's not very very cheap. What about um, the electric grid and water and stuff like that. So electricity is one of the things that, one of the only things actually in Cambodia that's more expensive than it was for us at home. Mm. Electricity is very expensive. And because it's such a hot place, if you like air conditioning, even if you're just using it to sleep at nighttime, it can become very expensive. Like yeah. we've heard people, because it's charged monthly, People having two, three, four hundred dollar bills mm. per month sometimes. Yeah. Dollars. Yeah. And you have to you have to be very, very careful about how you use it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are there a lot of expats in Siem Reap? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of expats, a lot of different countries, because uh, there's NGO uh, based there as well, and a lot of teachers. Um, probably not as much as Phnom Penh, mm -hmm. but Siem Reap's got more of a small city vibe, so everyone knows each other. Mm. So. You, uh, if you've got a friend in Siem Reap, you can easily find them, go for a drink. They can get back to their house with, with a tuk-tuk or pass out for like a dollar. It's mm. just really, it's very compact. Mm. Um, when you go to Phnom Penh, it's spread out. It's a massive um, city to get anywhere because of the, um, there's no rail links or that mm. kind of stuff. It takes ages. So if you had a friend in one side of the city and you're like, you'll never see them. Right. But in Siem Reap, there's, it's very, <coughs> very close. I think the expat community in Siem Reap is really in three groups. So there's younger people that are doing things like teaching or working in NGOs. There's other 
expats that own businesses, run things like bars, restaurants, hotels, stuff like that. And then you've got another group of people who are retirees. So most people, by and large, fit into one of those three categories, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, if you want to retire in um, Cambodia, all you need to uh, have be is 55. That's oh, it. Okay. That is it. That's the only um, thing you need to be is over 55. Mm. There's no, no um, extra information you need. And um, there's a lot of things to do too. You can do a lot of volunteer work, people do. Well, I, I certainly will keep it in mind as an alternative if Malaysia ever stops letting me live here. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful that um, for the retirement visa, you can just pay about $290. You're over 55, $290. Nobody wants to see your bank balance or anything like that. They wow. just, it's just not a concern. Yeah, because you're spending money in the country. Yeah. That's why they, do, they assume that you have the means to support yourself. So you do have people coming on quite small pensions and making a life for themselves in Cambodia, whereas they probably couldn't afford a similar lifestyle here in Malaysia, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What made you guys start a YouTube channel? Oh, I'll let Jeremy answer that one. <laughs> well, because Claire, when we first got to um, CM Reap, Claire was teaching. Uh, so I had nothing to do during the day and, I, and I, was, I was always rubbish down the street and I got to a point where I went, oh, I hate this rubbish. So I, I said, I'll make a YouTube channel and show what I've done to this, this um, uh, alleyway. So I started doing it and the um, people around in the street started helping me and eventually I went, it got better and better and better. Um, but then COVID hit and um, Claire changed jobs from what she was doing and she, because it was working from home most of the time. Mm. So Claire started getting involved with the um, YouTube channel. Mm. And then we got into what's been the best thing for the channel is the moto vlogs where I ride around on a bike. Um, then we do, then Claire does a voiceover of the news. Uh, cause through COVID, everyone wanted to know what was happening, you know, um, restrictions, uh, what was opening. Oh, yeah. So, and there wasn't really any uh, news kind of service that way for people. So that got um, really good traction. So that yeah, so I bet yeah. that really grew your channel. Yeah, it did, yeah. especially people liked. Um, there was news uh, channels as such, but they were, people wanted to see the what was around CM mm. Reap, so mm. they could watch the ride plus listen to us. It sort of became a bit of a lifeline for people in America, for example, or in the US, who really enjoy having holidays in Cambodia, but they hadn't been able to for exactly. the years of COVID, and they liked being able to sort of keep up with what was going on in Cambodia through the news, keep up with what was going on with borders and vaccination requirements and all of that stuff, while seeing parts of Siem Reap that they were so familiar with too from their own visits. Exactly. Mm. And I love how you pick offbeat news too, just to keep it interesting. We also try and steer clear of political stuff. Yes, it's yeah. <laughs> a we, good idea. Yeah, it's definitely not a road you want to go down, no. pardon the pun, yeah. in Cambodia. You know, I think it's amazingly altruistic because you guys donate everything you make from YouTube to charities. Is it for Cambodian charities? And what made you come up with that idea or why, why are you doing that? Um, because we're there uh, through COVID, we saw how hard um, everyone was like taking it and how hard it was hitting the Cambodian people. Mm. And we thought we, we had jobs or well, Claire had a job and I was still in ten, kind of employed, mm -hmm. um, but we had uh, money coming in so we didn't really need the money um, but when we were in Cambodia they were doing it so hard and they looked after everyone like mm. the all the vaccinations are free um, they uh, even cut the rent for us as well where we were living oh wow yeah so we went from 350 down to 250 and that they did it themselves mm. we had a contract um, they said no no we'll cut it because of COVID um, they were really nice people we had mm. really nice people living mm. with so that was the main reason and from then it's like we don't need it but we still love Cambodia so we just give back to the community. I think that's great. Have you guys met many other YouTubers like I have? We've actually met a lot of YouTubers um, such as yourself in Malaysia yes. which is wonderful. Yeah it's been great to spend time with you on this trip. Mm. We've had a great I've time. I've loved it, yeah. yeah. And in Cambodia as well, we've met lots of people. A lot of people we meet kind of online before we actually meet them in person. Yeah. And then it's kind of a strange thing because you, you have this thing where you know a little bit about who they are and they know a little bit about who you are. But it's still different when you meet in person, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we meet a lot of people on YouTube because when you watch YouTube, you go, oh, that person's really, you know, I like them. You watch them 
and you get to know them and you think, oh, that's a nice person I want to meet. Mm -hmm. It's different if you just go on the street and, oh, hello, who are you? You actually know right. something about them. Yeah. And fellow YouTubers, when we watch each other's channels, we know that, you know, what they like. It's like, if you watched our channel, didn't like us, I'm sure you met, met us. You're like, <laughs> oh, it's a bit awkward. But it, it is very good. Like, getting out and doing YouTube is great. I think it's a great thing to do. It is. I've met so many wonderful people, too. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you go to meet someone new that is watching you on YouTube, they already like you. You know, so yeah. you don't have to be worried about that aspect of it. Now, you might not like them, but <laughs> so far, so good. I really haven't met anyone I've really seriously disliked. <laughs> no, we found the same. It's been, it's been great. We've met other YouTubers and also just lots of people in general that, that ask us to catch up, you know, when they come to see them reap after yeah. they've been watching for a while. And we're more than happy to do that. And then yeah. there's the people that we kind of run into on the street as well, which is, which is fun. A lot of people express to me that they think YouTubers must be competitive with each other. And I just haven't found that to be the case at all. I think it's like a family almost. Mm. I think there might be some people out there that are like that. But as far as we're concerned, we are absolutely happy for everyone to start a channel. I think mm -hmm. the more the better. The more perspectives that are out there talking about Cambodia, the more experiences that people can watch and and you know, people that show Cambodia in a good light, yeah. the better for the country, which is what we're all about really is, is doing what we can to, to show how great Cambodia yeah. is. Yes, yeah. that's great. It really is great. Um, we're talking about YouTubers, like we go into two different kind of categories. Mm. We go into like expat um, YouTubers and travel like YouTubers. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you're living in a country, uh, you know it better. So at least people come in the travel ones, they come like two or three, maybe a week. And they just breeze through and some, sometimes things happen to them and they put a bat, like a negative light on the country. Mm. But like, since like we live in Cambodia and you live in uh, Malaysia, you put a different light on SPACs than travel vloggers would. Sure. That's one thing I've been told about my channel too, is that it's, you know, from a perspective of somebody who lives here and mm. not just blowing through on a vacation. Yeah, yeah it's so different. Yeah, it's very different. Mm. So what are your guys' plans for the future? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to give that one to Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do the channel. Uh, just travel around. We have got another channel called For Real Global. I've only got one video so far. But because we're traveling a lot now, we're trying to travel probably once every two or three months. We've um, been traveling a little bit too much at we the have. moment. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, house sitting, which is um, really good, but um, too much, too much. We've got to go back to Cambodia and settle down a bit more. Mm. Well, how long do you think you're going to be doing this? Or you, do you think you're ever going to go back to Australia and settle down? I don't really know. I suppose it's it's always a possibility, like anything is. Um, we might end up in, in another country. We might end up somewhere outside of Southeast Asia. But for the time being, I'm really enjoying living in Cambodia and being able to travel easily around Southeast Asia. So that's true. I have no intentions of moving, but yeah. who knows? Yeah, you never know. No, you don't. No. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for doing this interview today. You have been so sweet to me since you've been here because I've been having a little bit of problems and which we won't go into. But thank you so much. And I'm going to put the link to your YouTube channel in the description below so everybody else can check it out, too. It's really fun. So thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having us. It's been absolutely wonderful spending time with you, getting to know um, Kuala Lumpur a little bit more. Meeting Earl Grey. Wonderful. And meeting Earl Grey. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. not forget the man after my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, you guys. All good. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video today and this wonderful interview. If you did, please like and subscribe and check the notification box too, just so you can never miss any of my videos. But that's all we're going to have for now. But now I'm going to do a new video. It was Claire's idea. She's going to turn the tables on me and she's going to interview me. Now that's going to be a separate video, but stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Get, 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 get